Hello everybody, I'm your host, Dr. Darkspawn, and welcome. Welcome to another Meteor Maker video. Today we're going to be looking at advanced deadman switch setups for your guards, ways to have them trigger, ways to have them chained into other deadman switch setups, ways to time them, how to work with certain timings, how to use bloodlust to make a deadman switch speedrun trap. Beautiful. And some few other things here and there so these are mainly gonna be about the concepts of these ideas rather than the actual setup now i've got two setups that i use these in one will be a budget normal outpost setup and the other one will be a brutal outpost where it uses roughly about 3000 capacity again these are just for the core concepts and ways that you can make these work or chain into one another rather than this being the actual setup that i will be using inside a base now i will probably be building a base that is com that is brutal and completely based around this idea but that'll be in another video so let's hop right into it then shall we right for the normal base setup i actually have a zigzag pattern to the front door to just try and mess with the player's perception i have a trap or two to just try and force them to destroy the trigger which in this case is the impaler the way how this works is the impaler gets destroyed, as you know, it's explosion, self-destruct, destroys the holocube, and then it's got three hornets passed along the bottom. Now these three hornets go out, one of them goes through the corrosive here at the front, this one at the bottom goes through that one, the corrosive at the top, and the other hornet flies over the side here, enters through this corrosive, and drops through the second half of this open block onto the pathway the player will be fighting the hornet that went through the first corrosive so in this pathway the one hornet will be above you it'll drop behind you and explode and the one in front of you with dead miss which will explode again and through all of this there are a few warmongers that were strategically hidden that also use dead man switch that triggered with bloodlust and run with a very long and convoluted path this is the smallest map type so it's as long as i could make the path timed so that just as soon as this one drops and explodes the warmongers will be directly behind you if you triggered the cannon back at the end of the hallway and destroyed the impaler as you came around this corner now these timings can differ you can change these timings by pathing with a hornet for example after they go past the masquerade block so whatever waiting time you put on a hornet before the masquerade block actually is broken will be counted as having been waited the moment the block breaks. So after they go through here, if you want them to wait, you fly them up to whatever point you want them to go into and die. And then you wait here for a few seconds and then you drop them into the corrosive. It has to be done after the hollow cube or it won't work. Now, I've just had a few, put a few of the guards in and one or two traps to try and prevent speed running along with the warmonger at the front with DMS as well. So the warmonger and the bolt shot kind of prevent you know, speed running through this too much as well as one enforcer down here to further leash the bloodlust guards in and a bomb ejector that splits three ways right down the middle here. One bomb and two bombs going through this corrosive and one or two dropping through this corrosive as well. So a great bomb ejector to stop speed running on a normal base is fantastic, especially if it splits three ways through corrosives, um, as well as a warmonger or two and some DMS guards in the middle to stall you so that there's enough time for the hornets to get to you. Yeah, pretty pretty budget setup. One, we got two hornets dropping through the entrance pathway, one dropping at a separate timer on a anti speed run bit here past the other guards we, you know make sure not to kill them and a simple trigger of one impaler destroying one hollow cube and three hornets on three different timings to try and catch the player off guard very simple very easy to set up not very expensive in terms of mods all you really need is an impaler with self-destruct the hollow cube with masquerade and guards with dead net switch and that's it it's pretty consistent if in this hallway you have something forcing them to see and look at this impaler the whole time and realize that it's got multiple mods on it 
so that does kind of entice them to kill it. Also having a cannon back in a small tight enclosed hallway and the impaler next to the last place where the player was seen as well as a v-shape set of slanted blocks that catch the bomb that the cannon back shoots so the cannon back bomb will kind of like roll into this corner and will destroy the impaler to try and give it some consistency so you want something that consistently destroys the impaler as well as the timings on top of that now i'll go into detail and more on the larger outpost but yeah this is the budget setup i've only used a thousand i think 350 capacity for this and because a lot of these guards don't even see harvey's pathway they also don't add as much to danger rating as they normally would right now for the larger example we are on my testing base and effectively what i've got here is i have a let's start at the beginning i have a cannon back that triggers the bloodlust of two warmongers at the far back of the third corridor in the setup those bloodlust guards are on max range and they run into a blockade burning piston piston how that works is bloodlust guards don't stop for pistons normal guards do stop for normal pistons but if you're triggered with bloodlust they'll run into the pistons and because i put burning piston on it they will end up dying so this gives it consistency where the death piston will always kill the guard and the guard will always explode if, even if the second one doesn't die because it runs into the back of the first one, for example, as the piston is retracting, the explosion will kill it, triggering a second explosion on a delay timer, further zoning the player out of that area. Now, in this specific trigger, I would use this with some kind of pressure at the back. If you can put a very deadly section right in front of this that players look at it and go nah i'm not dealing with that i'm gonna skip it right i want to get past this as fast as possible and then have one or two cannon bags or some plasma signals behind them shooting at them while they're in this hallway so that they don't really have time to sit back and look at this hallway and really think about hmm, what's going on here what do i how do i deal with this we don't want them to do that we don't want them to realize what's happening and how everything is timed. And if the greatest weakness of the setup is that they can just trigger the first trigger, which is this impaler, destroy it, and then walk backwards. And then they're fine. Nothing else needs to happen. So we need constant pressure on them in the first hallway. It doesn't need to be this long, but I just made it this long for demonstration purposes. Right, so this cannon bag has dead man switch, and my solution to it not being able to shoot was to give it also DMS. If someone is rushing past this specific trap setup, they will trigger the impaler. The impaler will kill the cannon back, which will explode with dead man switch, which will destroy the impaler, which will destroy, as with the first setup, the masquerade hollow cube, which will cause the two hornets to path. Now, these two DMS hornets have to fly through the masquerade cube even if there's enough space for them to exit through at the bottom as long as you fly them through the masquerade cube the path will end before they go through this block so they go up here and one of them flies into this corrosive on this side it drops down it explodes and it kills these three warmongers which are pathed to actually there we go now it works which i'll have to stand on the edge of these blocks it dies right about here it falls down it explodes it kills all three of these warmongers now because these warmongers are standing on the edge of the block they kind of fall straight down and hit the edge and then they start to like teeter forward they lean forward and gravity slowly pulls them down and then they fall into the corrosives now falling into the corrosives they do that slowly so they first like kind of fall down and then they slump forward and then they drop and with the way that it's timed the guards will die and then slowly fall after dying so and while this is happening the dead man switch trigger is actually active and it explodes the moment they come out of this corrosive cube 
so it's pretty instantaneous and pretty deadly and does not give you a lot of time to react to the DMS. Now these two warmonger sets, the first set on this side and on this side, uses two different sets of timings. The hornet that flies to the ones on the right immediately flies into the corrosive, dies and you know causes these three to fall down. This is the entrance corridor and it's got double thick corrosives on top of it. Important, please do make them double thick. Um, you don't have to path these warmongers in a specific way. Just put them on the edge of the blocks, they'll fall through. It has to be double thick, otherwise people can just grab through them and it becomes trivial to get rid of these guards. Right. So, with that in mind, the second hornet actually paths out of the masquerade hollow cube. It goes up this way and then it waits here for about five seconds instead of immediately going into the corrosive like the hornet on the opposite end. It then flies into the corrosive, falls down and causes the warmongers to die, fall down and it also destroys this hollow cube at the back. Now this hollow cube being destroyed at the back blocks this warmonger and the two warmongers above it, these two, to actually path as they should because there's an obstruction in the way this one walks to the edge of the block goes through the hollow cube partially and then walks around the end and drops this way now these three are passed and are triggered from the destruction of the hollow cube in the middle which is done by the second hornet that goes up let's watch them the one on the right immediately goes into the corrosive and this one here waits a moment before going into the corrosive drops and then explodes, it destroying the hollow cube, causing these three warmongers to path, these two paths downwards, and this one paths towards the edge over here. And this causes the two warmongers on the bottom, one standing over here and one standing on this side, to also be destroyed. Now, this one actually explodes and does not kill the incinerator at the back of this uh, flame guard and DMS in case someone tries rushing past them. Now this one at the back does get destroyed I believe but the hollow cube that I have here might remain intact. I'm not 100% sure from the first explosion but the second explosion from this warmonger dying does destroy this hollow cube. It's just for people that's going really fast that they try and rush through it that they can't see what's happening here. Now keep in mind, while all this is happening, there is pressure coming at them from whatever was behind the entrance to the zone that is forcing them to quickly progress through this next part. So that is imperative. There are also some security traps as there is a overshot, relentless bolt shot at the back here that is aimed to catch anyone that is way too fast and actually can try and get past the speedrun trap that they have to worry about the DMS on top as well as the bolts and the piston and the guards on the floor trying to kill them. So let's give it a run or two or maybe a few more to try and just see how these concepts kind of link together. The destruction of the impaler causes the destruction of that. The hornet dies, causes the warmongers to fall down and explode, which causes the second set of warmongers to explode, as well as the warmongers that were initially on the floor. The one up here actually does not die. Kill that, go forward, which triggers the bloodlust warmongers to come through and leads to death. Alright, so in this one I wasn't trying to speedrun it and because I had killed the cannon back at the beginning before it aggroed completely, that caused the speedrun trap to not work. So right now I'm gonna equip a shield and a sledge to try and get through this as fast as I possibly can.
get hit from behind and the warmongers at the front end up dying to the death piston now if you somehow get past past the death piston exploding the warmongers as well as the relentless bolt shot at the back then you will be met with dms and another follow-up trap so overall if you want to make it a little more consistent for speedrunners you would add a second death piston roughly around here or actually you would add it further towards the side that the raider is running in from so you would add it on these blocks over here to try and give it some more consistency in case the warmongers do make it past and stall any potential speedrunners even further now let's take this at a bit of a more mid-run mid-ish speed Dying to the warmonger is actually quite common for the middle type of speeds and then the traps on the size actually are quite deadly when it comes to zoning the player out. Now if you want you can put more traps to try and give an added layer of deadliness to this middle section but again it's not about the actual effectiveness of the setup that I have here, because the setup can be optimized quite a lot, the actual thing I'm trying to showcase here is the concept, the concept of delaying your hornets, delaying your dead man switch triggers, delaying the warmongers dropping from the first DMS proc on the hornets, having bloodthirst guards run into the death pistons and dying to that to create a timed dead man switch speedrun trap where one of the warmongers may pass through or where both of them may die and it causes two explosions at different timings really like messing with the player's perception and also having a different trap at the back with some extra zoning towards it and if you take these concepts and you apply them in the correct manner then you can make an extremely effective dead man switch only trigger setup with multiple different timings multiple different triggers multiple ways to get those triggers to activate and delays on them while at the same time nuking your raiders into oblivion now to try and better showcase how this whole setup looks i'm going to remove all of the red blocks in this and show you the bare bones of what this has on the entrance and on the little corridor in between as well as towards the exit it's got double thick corrosives it's got the warmongers as shown before and on the bottom it's got the two triggered hornets from the hollow cube it's got a very simple design in terms of where the warmongers are and what they're meant to be doing. You don't want to make it too complicated by using slanted blocks, etc. That could really mess with the outpost and give raiders a safe space to use a shield on, for example. And that's another thing that this tri setup tries to play around with is countering people that use a shield and as you've seen with the warmongers dropping down from the sides of these blocks they drop down and it's very little time to kind of react to these explosions and while the raider is going through this they're going to be hearing multiple explosions going off everywhere things are going to be happening and they're going to be extremely confused and not know how and when to use their shield if they do and even when they do because there's a delay between the first warmongers, the second warmongers, the bloodlust warmongers and all the traps in between as well as the tr other traps giving the pressure down this corridor forcing them into a position where they'll be more vulnerable it's going to be too many things to accommodate for and it's going to rack you up some insane kills alrighty i hope you've enjoyed the video and it's got some of those creative juices flowing when it comes to using dead men switch triggers and you know ways to set them up ways to make them more consistent that you use these and catch players off guard in ways that they didn't expect or think dead men switch can even be used and as always i've been your host 
Dr. Darkspawn, and you've been amazing. Stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.